Speaking on a topic, the lamb that was slain. You know, when we think about what our mothers did, you know, they birthed us into the world and for different reasons we have stories of sacrifices and labors. Amen. But a certain woman gave birth to a lamb that was slain. We're not going to be talking about her, but we'll be talking about that lamb that was slain. That as others, we are celebrating giving birth to I think I have a bit of an echo. Yeah, giving birth to their children. I know we have dreams. We have aspirations. We have ideas, visions of what we want our children in different capacities, our world to become. You have a picture and when we see them derail from that picture, we tend to labor hard to get them back on track. But Jesus was born and he was born as a sacrifice. Not belonging to the parents to whom he was born, but as a gift for the redemption of the world. For the next maybe 25 minutes, we'll be exploring the topic, the lamb that was slain. Isaiah 53, 1 to 11, popular scripture. Um, it's also displayed on the screen. Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? King James Version. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there was no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But, take note, but that all these he was, this, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the punishment of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed, he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her sharers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth in defense. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? No, no one. For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was his stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, Joseph of Arimathea, because he had done no violence. Neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant Justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Hallelujah. Okay. 
Just could you help with the slides? This is stock. Thank you. Media team, please, could you help transition the slides? Okay. Well, we'll continue. Uh, um, Isaiah 53 give us, gives us a vivid picture of what Jesus Christ went through to bring redemption to us. Okay, excellent. So Jesus, or rather Isaiah, the lamb that takes away our sins. You see, we were, con we were really, you see, we were condemned to death. Because the Bible makes us understand that the soul that sinners shall die. The Bible makes us understand that we have been condemned already. The Bible makes us understand that whoever, that we are, we, we are condemned to complete destruction. We have lost our way and our eternal destination was that God was angry with man because man has sinned against him. And the blood and in the pursuit for the redemption of man. Because the Bible says in Romans 3.23 that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. And in that plan, there was a journey. Bulls, animals, the blood of hyphas were being used for washing, for cleansing, for some form of atonement in the Old Testament. But this we are not able to purge us. No, Hebrews 10 for says something. For it was impossible for the blood of, blood of bulls and of goats to take away our sins. Or for the blood of an hypha to purge us from an evil conscience. It wasn't working. It just wasn't working. That partition, that separation remained. And it continued, but fine. But God had to make a decision. And there was a need for a sacrifice. That sacrifice was to ensure that we had forgiveness of our sins. Was to ensure that we were purged. That mankind was saved from destruction, from domination, from the clutches, from the grip, from the stronghold, from the stranglehold of Satan, from the bondage of darkness, from the imprisonment of our souls, from the, from, from the depravity that man had suffered, from the way the enemy had assaulted man, had brought insanity, sickness, death, impurity, sin, captivity, strange covenant, where men were cursed. People were living under curses, under imprisonment, under shackles, and they just could not be set free. And God decided to release his son. In John 1.29, it says the next day, John saw Jesus. When John saw Jesus, that was the testimony that John the Baptist gave. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That was the introduction when the man who was a forerunner to Jesus, who was sent to declare and to prepare the way for Jesus, as soon as he saw Jesus, the description, his first cry was finally, that eternal lamb, that lamb that will never cease to be a lamb, has finally shown up, that has come to take away the sin of the world. Because Jesus is that lamb. That was slain. We would, and we will, we, will, we will look at. You see Jesus paid that price. And one thing unique about that sacrifice that Jesus made. It was once and for all men. Amen. In Romans 10 we read it. He said for the death that he died. He died to sin. Ending his power. Amplified version. And paying the sinner's debt. Once and for all. And the life that he lives, he lives to glorify God in unbroken fellowship with God. That was the essence that the fellowship of man with God will not be broken. That's why in Hebrews, he said, for he broke the middle wall of partition and made out of two one new man. And that's why on the cross of Calvary, as soon as he died, the Bible says the, rain, the, the veil in this temple was rent, was torn into two. 
giving us access to the throne of God. There was no need for an Ark of the Covenant. There was no need for a high priest. That There was no need to go to the holy place because we became the carriers of God's presence. We became God's tabernacle. We, we got access to the holiest of holies. The Bible says, in, 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 the Bible says we have not come anymore to that mountain that burns with fire. You know, that burns that Moses even said, I exceedingly fear and, and tremble. No, he said, no, but we have come to Mount Zion, the city of God, to the innumerable company of angels, to the blood of the saints, and to the church of the saints, to, and to the blood of the Lamb, and what, and even and, and on and on and on. Because that veil was broken when Jesus died on the cross. It, that, that if we have access, unlimited access, we have access to his throne. When we kneel down and when we say our father, we are talking, that sacrifice gave us the right to call him father. And that way when Jesus came, he said, you are no longer slaves. But I call you friends. The Bible says in Romans that, when, that, that we are joint heirs. We are joint heirs with him. Joint heads mean that we have access to everything that Jesus had access to. And that was done by the blood of the Lamb. Being the Lamb that was slain made Jesus worthy of... Shall we read this? Mm. Okay, Revelations 5, 1 to 9. Please, let's go there. I think this is important. Now, this is in heaven. Now, John the Baptist made that declaration when he showed up on it. But this is a heavenly sin. Please, could you help me out, media team? Revelations 5, 1 to 9. This was too long for me to copy and paste. Okay. Just, he said, and I saw the right hand of him who sat in the throne of the sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals and no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it the destiny of mankind the revelation of God's plan for mankind mankind was such that it was in the hand of the father and no one was able to open the scroll no one was able to break the seal so I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it but one of the elders said to me weep not do not weep behold the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose his seals and you see what the son said and I looked and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain that's what made him worthy to open the scroll and to break the seal as though it has won, been slain, and this is in heaven, having seven horns, seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, which went out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now, when he had taken the scroll, that's Jesus now taking the scroll as a slain lamb from the hand of the Father. And he said, now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers to the saints. Let's stop there. Of the saints. Let's stop there. So we can understand that when the prayers of the saints goes up, the picture, the vivid picture in heaven is a lamb that was slain with the entire heaven worshipping that lamb and the father seeing the sacrifice of of Jesus, the Lamb, seeing the eternal sacrifice, and that is why our prayers come as an offering unto God, because because their Lamb gives access. They, oh, please, we are, no, back to that scripture, please. And it says, and they sang a new song, saying, "You are worthy." Listen to this: "You are worthy to take this scroll." And to open his seals. Reason for you we are slain. 
and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every... Now, listen to this. You have, you have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation. Please, could you continue? Okay, we'll go. And, 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 and that was... And, okay... And have made us kings and priests to God, and we shall reign on the earth. And you understand that. So we understand that he's dying on the cross. He's coming as a lamb that was slain. It was not just a ceremony. It had eternal and heavenly consequences. So when there was a standstill in heaven, and in the revelation, John began to weep and, dis and discovered that that means there's a standstill. The eternal destiny of mankind is in jeopardy. Somebody, and he was told, don't, do not weep. I don't know if there are things that are making you weep. There are things that have put you in a standstill. It looks like you have come to a lot. The Bible is saying, weep not. For the lamb that was slain, that he is worthy to take the scroll and to break everything that has remained sealed. Everything that has remained unopened in your life and in my life. Because he said, for that was slain. Because he was slain. Because he went through that sacrifice. Every seal is opened in your life. Every seal is opened in your home. Every seal over your health is open. Every unopened scroll of your destiny, of the plan of God that has, that has not been revealed. Because of the work of Jesus on the cross, you have a right, you have access to access every plan, every purpose, every covenant, every breakthrough every deliverance, every healing, everything that Jesus wrought on the cross of Calvary because the work is a finished work. It was not only finished on heaven by the declaration, of, on earth by the declaration of John the Baptist, but even in heaven, he stands as a lamb that was slain because that sacrifice was not only on the cross of Calvary, it was an eternal sacrifice. That is why, and the difference between the lamb of the Old Testament and the lamb that was slain, and that is Jesus, is that even though, is that he, Bible says for that, for living, it, when lambs were slaughtered in the Old Testament, when Bible called, they were dead sacrifices, amen? They died and they, were, they had no trouble for him. He's a lamb that even though he was slain, but he lives and reigns forever. Amen. Next, okay, next slide, please. And okay, can we go back to the slides, please? Thank you. So that sacrifice was once, it was final, it was total. He died, he suffered to bring God's mercy. You see, we read through Isaiah, one of the things I would discover is that everything that he do, did was to bring us mercy, was to bring us forgiveness, was to bring us deliverance. Sometimes we do not appreciate what Jesus went through. You know, I just put a quick highlight. There was, Bible says that, that who would remember his generation? He's, he was cut short in his 30s. He did not experience what we call old age. Long life was something that he did, that was taken away from him. And yet, Bible says that, and he pleased the father. God, Bible says, when the father saw it, he was pleased because he, he understood it, the total, the final plan. He was rejected. He, was, he experienced shame, killed like a common criminal, hung on the cross. If you, on, I mean, in the Middle East, it's a desert place. He was, he was killed between twelve and three. That's hot afternoon. If in the desert, in the Middle East, it is very hot. Very, very hot. You think there's summer in Canada? You know, some of those countries, they have to sprinkle, you know, at the tank of our technology today, they sprinkle water in the air just to keep the place cool. You know, I, I've had, I, I've been, I spent about a week in Kuwait. Jesus of Nazareth. That's, you would think, you are baking. 
Yes, you sometimes you are, you feel as if your body is baking. I know there is something about the heat in that place in the Middle East. It is dry, it is hot, and there was this man hanging up in the sky, looking with the sun, hot sun on him. You know that you'll be sweating, the sweat will be entering your eyes, entering your nose. In that kind of situation, of course, Qatar will be pouring out of your nose. It was terrible. They made him carry a cross after beating him, punishing him because of you and me. He carried it so much, at some point he could no longer cope. They had to carry a man, Simon of Cyrene, a Libyan, to carry the cross. And for them, when they got there, they, when they got to the place, you think they tied him? No. If you think of a nail big and strong enough to hold a human being up in the sky, that is the kind of nail they used. Those are the kind of nails that they used for construction then. They broke through his, they took his hands, they broke the nails, they broke through his bones. Put the nails there, put the two hands and they hung him up there. They took his feet to nail through your legs. Have you imagined the kind of the kind of bones on your feet. A nail that will break through those bones and suspend you into a, in, into a, into the, a tree. A hang on there. They broke his bones. If you think it's a joke, can someone help me? We'll just, I'll just take a hammer and hit your finger. We'll just crack it a little. We are not penetrating. Just a, an experiment. You know, you know, if you don't, if you hammer and you mistakenly hit your finger, sometimes even the waiting for the pain to come is a painful wait. You know, sometimes when you hit yourself, you are waiting for the pain because you know it's coming. <laughs> and he was bleeding, his bones were broken because of you and because of me. And in all this, he saw the mercy, he saw your deliverance, he saw your prosperity. He saw the holds of the devil broken. He saw mercy. And he, he went through all those. And this would they showed him no mercy. He said, ah, I am thirsty. I need water. They went, they didn't even have the grace to even make the vinegar, at least liquid, at least give him to a drink. No, they went, they dipped a sponge into it. And then they went and they put it in his mouth just to touch. And he was there for hours. And they continue to mock him. That you said that you are the king of the Jews. Save yourself. One of the accounts said at some point they played games with him. Somebody will slap him on, from the back and say, Oh, yeah, prophesy. Who slapped you? I be you are a prophet. They made a mockery of the king of glory so that you and I have, can have access to eternal life. So that you and I can have access to our inheritance in heaven. Because of you and through all this, all Jesus could see was you and me. Our salvation, our healing, the mercy of God that was going to say no to our eternal destruction. The peace, the deliverance that we come. Are you, are you here, you are laboring under one cause or one issue? Jesus has finished the work because behold the lamb that was slain. He's worthy to open the scroll and to break the seal and bring a revelation of God's power, of God's mercy and of God's goodness. He died so that we can have life. In summary, it's important my brothers and my sisters <laughs> that we embrace this God's mercy and the love that Jesus show, showed us. He endured shame. He was hung like a criminal, like a bandit. Some of us, if they accuse us falsely, it's a very big deal. We feel very bad. You know, I currently chair an, an association in Nigeria. And in Nigeria, they believe anybody who is controlling money is a thief. Sometimes there is somebody who has been too who insults me, insults me for months. He said, in fact, he's going to bring ESCC to investigate me, do all that. And sometimes I'll be so angry. Like, 
in fact, one time I was talking to somebody and I was telling another resident that, that no, that there are some things I don't joke with. My integrity is something people don't question. And later I asked man and said, but what of Jesus? They did not only question integrity. They called him a criminal and they hanged him like one. And Bible said he did not say a word in defense for himself. But here we are. If we say just now, ah, Brashenu is a thief. That, you see that church council may start settling the matter. But then he said no word. He went like a lamb to the sharers because he saw you and me. Weep not because the lamb that was slain has broken the seal over your life, over your destiny, over your health, over everything, over God's plan in your life. And he has brought you redemption and he has brought you victory through his blood. So much love, so much mercy. How can a man turn his back away from this love? How can a man see this love and choose not to be born again? How can a man despise such an eternal sacrifice? That he was not only slain on earth, he remains a lamb that was slain in heaven. So that when the prayers of the saints come, the father has, continues to see a lamb that was slain. Rise up on our feet and let us pray. I don't know if you are here and you are playing hanky-panky games with your Christianity. Say, Lord, I don't want to despise. Just help me not to make your sacrifice for my life a waste. My time is already up, so I'm just going to be out of here in a minute. Say, Lord, don't, I don't want my sacri your sacrifice for me to be a waste. Help me to live for you. To be a living sacrifice just as you remain a living sacrifice in heaven. The reason he has called us to be living sacrifices here on earth is because he himself remains a living sacrifice in heaven. Alive as the king of glory but yet a slain lamb in heaven. The lamb that was slain. He loves me. I cannot say why. He loves me, I cannot say why. On Calvary tree, he suffered for me. He loves me, he, I, I cannot, cannot say why. He loves me, he loves me. I, I cannot say why. He loves me. He loves me. I cannot say why. On oh, Calvary, he suffered for me. He suffered for me. He loves me. He loves me. I cannot say why. Explain that God commended His love towards me and you. That when I was a wretched sinner, you were a wretched sinner. Jesus died for us, He died for us, He gave us hope, He gave us peace. Are you here? And yet, you are not experiencing peace, you are not experiencing redemption, you are not experiencing the deliverance. This is the time I to say, Lord, I embrace the totality of access that your covenant has he brought for me, that your death has I brought for me. Because he loves me, I cannot explain. I cannot fathom. Maybe you are here, and sometimes maybe I'm guilty of it. Taking this sacrifice for this sacrifice for granted. But God is here to show mercy. He's here to help us. 